So today we'll be looking at the new Nissin 622 Mark II and we're going to take a look at the unboxing about the new features and uh, see what's new inside. So here's what we have in the package. First we have the flash light itself. Uh, you can swivel in, in both ways. It has a diffuser as well and a, a mini mini bounce card and um, yeah, it has many functions which we'll take a look later and it has a flash stand uh, it has a metal mount uh, small soft bag and hard copy and soft copy manuals here we have the Nissan 622 Mark II and you can put four batteries in the compartment and you can simply sort it in and just press the on button and you'll turn on so uh, while it's loading, it's red in color and when it's ready to fire, it'll be in, in, in green and you can do uh, uh, test shots by pressing this button so functions wise, you um, can uh, do flash exposure composition easily by uh, pressing these two buttons so you can either, um, you can either add or subtract the exposure by, by um, going up and down in a matter of um, half stops up to maximum of one and a half in both directions you can just go to manual mode so you can either this is the lowest power to the full power this is in full stops or you can uh, set it to slave mode this is the slave mode in digital mode means that you, when, when the sensor receives a uh, uh, digital flash means that there will be a pre-flash then the unit will fire the second slave mode is the um, analog slave mode meaning that when any flash reaches the sensor this gun will fire and the final mode is a new mode is a, they call it a group 1 um, channel and the final mode is the Nikon uh, think CLS compatible mode in uh, channel 1 group A so when you use any CLS uh, compatible flash such as the SP series you can control this flash as well and um, yeah and it will be in TTL and to look at the recycling time, uh, we are going to push in full power. We're using uh, our client batteries over here, and the uh, recharging time is around 4 seconds, we think. Yep. Here we have the uh, Nissan 622 Mark 1 on my left hand and the Mark 2 on my right hand. And the uh, looks is basically the same. And for the Mark 1, it's very simple. So there's no TTL composition on the flash itself while the Mark II has it. So the Mark II basically compares uh, closely to the 466 which you can uh, set the exposure composition, have some slave modes and a new feature here is the setting of the Channel 1 Group A in a CLS compatible Nikon mode. And um, other than that, it looks practically identical. The power is the same as guide number 44. One of, the new, one of the new things about this uh, 622 Mark II is that uh, they have an Xing port as well as a 3.5mm port for you to connect your um, flash receivers, flash triggers to do some creative uh, syncing. Here we have a Photix Photo wireless transmitter set and the receiver is hooked up to the um, Nissan 622 Mark II to the 3.5mm port and then we can uh, see that we can trigger this easily via this way. One of the early issues of the DI622 the Mark 1 version, at least for the one for Canon, it couldn't be triggered using radio triggers such as the Photix Aster and other PT04 triggers out there. This is the Mark 2 version and um, we have inserted the Photix Aster and then we set the flash to the manual mode, lowest power, and we can see that it triggers really well. So um, there won't be any issues with, at least for this unit, with uh, radio triggers. So this is the good news for Canon users.